back in 2007, there was one major issue on bank balance sheets. Today, there are four or five major issues on bank balance sheets. So, you know, where people thought that the banking system was made so much stronger uh, after the 2008-2009 debacle, in fact, when you pull apart the, the major banking balance sheets, they're actually worse today. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, today we're going to bring you a person whose predictions uh, are not real positive. He's been right a lot of times, more often than he's been wrong. Avi Gilbert is with us. Avi, it's great to have you back on. So tell us what lies in store for the markets. Well, uh, we're, we're looking for possibly one more push higher um, over the coming month or so. Um, assuming that, you know, we're not going to break down below 5,300, uh, I'm looking for uh, one more one more rally up towards uh, 58, 58, 75 or so. Um, and uh, I think once that next rally completes, I think we could be putting a little exclamation point on a very, very long term bull market run that, from my perspective, started all the way back in 1932. 1932, huh? That's a, that's a lot of years. You know, we're talking like uh, 91 years here. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a very it, we're we're looking at it from a very very long term perspective. Um, from an Elliott Wave standpoint, uh, the 1929 crash, which bottomed out in 1932, uh, took off about 80 percent of the market relatively quickly. I mean, two three years is relatively quickly, um, and we view that as a second wave in the five wave structure. So from 1932 until where we are right now, we're completing a very, very long term third wave. In fact, in 1941, Ralph Nelson Elliott himself predicted this run. Uh, he was looking for a 70 or 80 year bull market back in 1941. And that's that third wave that I'm talking about. And as we complete this structure up here, I think it will will be we have enough waves to complete that long term bull market structure, which will likely usher in a uh, a very long term correction. All right. And when we're talking pre-call, you're talking about the banks and potential uh, banking crisis on the horizon. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that we're doing for our clients is, you know, of course, you know, they, they ask us, well, how do we prepare for such a for such an environment? And it's one that we really have in face because there's going to be multiple issues that we're going to be facing. Um, as an example, the banking in, in industry itself back in 2007, there was one major issue on bank balance sheets. Today, there are four or five major issues on bank balance sheets. So, you know, where people thought that the banking system was made so much stronger uh, after the 2008-2009 debacle, in fact, when you pull apart the, the major banking balance sheets, they're actually worse today, and there are more things that could take them down today than back in 2007. Really? So, you know, so one of the things we're looking for is we we actually started a service not too long ago, saferbankingresearch.com, and 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 we have been looking for the, some of the safest banks in this country, the safest banks in the eurozone, the safest banks in Canada. So that's really been a very big focus of ours because what we learned back during the 2010 debacle in Europe when Cyprus. Uh, when their banks went under, they did something called a bail-in. Bail yes. Right. So so uh, I don't think we're going to have the stomach to do bailouts anymore in the U.S., and I think we're probably going to be moving towards that Cyprus model of the bail-in going forward. And if people are not necessarily preparing for that scenario, they could find themselves owning 
bank stock instead of owning actual cash. Uh, so you think the banks would actually exchange or give out shares or IOUs? Maybe they'll own, own bank IOUs. Maybe they'll be saleable, right? Well, what they'll wind up doing, my my expectation, like I said, in light of what we learned with Cyprus, is they'll they'll convert a certain percentage of the uh, of the bank accounts of their uh, of their client base to restructure the bank and make it much more solid. So, whereas you know you had a certain amount of cash in your bank. Um, you know, some of that cash, maybe a significant amount. I don't know exactly how much really is going to depend on the bank. Uh, some of that cash is going to be taken from you and we can convert it into stock and shares of the bank. Now, people would say, well, how could they do this? Well, you know, I don't believe legally they could do it yet, but I am quite sure that the legalities will be settled later on. At the end of the day, if you're a creditor, you know, by the way, most people don't realize that when when uh, you put money in a bank, you're a bank creditor, is, you're a creditor you, and you're an unsecured creditor. So if a bank goes under, then you're an unsecured creditor for the amount that you have in that bank. Now, people say, well, the FDIC will stand behind it. Well, the FDIC can only stand behind a certain amount. And even back in the 2008-2009 debacle, I think the FDIC went, their, their dip fund, deposit insurance fund went negative. I think the number was maybe 31 or 31 billion. I mean, it was it was a massive number. Yes. And that went for a very, very short period of a banking crisis. That was only a year or so long banking crisis. What happens if we go into a very, very long-term malaise and banks have multiple issues. I don't believe the FDIC will have the capacity to stand behind uh, the, behind the industry to that extent. And I think people may be left out on the cold if they're not preparing sooner rather than later. It could get that bad, huh? The, you know, I, I, as I say, I am an analyst. I'm not a prophet, but yeah. I can easily see this happening once we go into a very long-term bear market. Easily. Mm -hmm. That long, huh? Wow. Uh, when was when was the last time we had a bear market as long as the one you're forecasting? Well, the uh, from from an Elliott Wave perspective, uh, as I said, we are we are finishing off a very long term third wave, and within that third wave, it also breaks down as five waves. The fourth wave of this long term five waves, the fourth wave was actually the 2000 to 2009 market correction. It was basically sideways for nine years. And that was a fourth wave of one lesser degree than I'm expecting to come up. So my expectation is it should take longer than that long-term market correction. That one took nine years. My expectation is it's probably going to take 13 to 21 years, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, Good thing is I'll probably be gone for that. So <laughs> when it gets really bad, when it gets really, really bad, but no, seriously. People people have the opportunity to at least prepare and protect themselves now. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's better to be prepared and hope for the best mm. uh, and pray for the best than not be prepared and the worst actually happens. Yeah, that's true, too. I don't uh, disagree with you there. Uh, so how do you prepare? Cash? Cash is king? Well, the, the answer is yes and no. Um, if you have cash, you have to make sure it's, it's, in, it's in a solid bank. That's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, whereas the 1929 to 32 market crash was basically straight down, there's an Elliott Wave principle called the theory of alternation. And it says that the second wave occurs in a certain way, then the fourth wave is going to occur in the exact opposite way. So my expectation for this long-term bear market is that it's going to be a lot of, um, you know, little crashes followed by multi-year rallies, followed by another crash and a multi-year rally followed by... So you know, during the, when, when you expect the crashes to set up, clearly you go to cash, maybe treasuries. It really depends because the treasury market is also setting up for a crash as we look out towards the second half of this decade. Um, and the same thing is going to happen in the treasury market. But overall, they're going to be multi-year periods of time where you can invest in the market during long-term corrective rallies. For example, 2003 to 2007 was a long-term corrective rally. 
Um, mm -hmm. So there are going to be multiple opportunities for that to be able to put your money back into the market and be able to at least make some money during those multi-year rallies. But you're also going to have to be much more cautious because of those because of the multiple crashes that we'll probably have during that long term bear market. Mm -hmm. Multiple crashes, multiple waves, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So cash in the right bank, uh, gold, silver. Is that going to do you any good? Well, uh, gold and silver, we're looking to uh, to rally over the next year, maybe two. Really depends uh, how fast the next rally takes shape. But you know, we're looking for sizable rallies, typically in silver and in the mining uh, uh, stocks. Gold, we're looking for a sizable rally as well. But it has completed a lot of its long term rally off the 2015 end of 2015 low. So silver and, and the mining stocks will probably do a big catch-up phase over the next year or so. But once they complete their long-term structures over the next year or so also, they're going to be going into a multi-year uh, bear market as well. Mm -hmm. So everyone's getting hit. But in times where there's credit collapse, I've heard it often said that, well, the nominal price of gold might go down, its purchasing power can go up. I mean, it's possible. Uh, there's no question about it. It's possible. Um, but I, I, I mean, I'm, I think what very few people think about this, and um, I believe that cash will probably be a lot more important than people really believe. Everybody is still looking for the U.S. dollar collapse. Uh, I'm looking for a sizable decline in the, U in the U.S. dollar index, the Dixie, uh, as we look out towards the second half of this year. I'm looking for a sizable decline to take hold. Uh, you know, that'll last now maybe uh, nine months, a year. I'm not sure exactly how long it'll last, but that's going to set up a multi-year uh, rally in the uh, in the Dixie in the U.S. dollar, I think we could see a rally that lasts maybe even as long as ten years in 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 the dollar after this next decline that begins over the next few months. So, so you know, whereas people believe the dollar is going to just collapse, I, I, I'm not of that same opinion. Okay, so uh, the dollar is not going to collapse, but uh, a lot of other currencies are going to, aren't they? Yeah, potentially. I'm not. I'm not an expert in all the other currencies, but yeah, there is strong potential for that. Yeah, can see it. And uh, yeah, with what's going on, uh, you know, the BRICS and all that, people are worried. You think that uh, it's going to displace the dollar, but uh, you know, some of these currencies that comprise the BRICS are really, uh, yeah, really perilous, like the uh, yuan, and you know, forget and about. I, and I, I. I also have an issue with uh, with the eurozone as well. I don't yeah. think they're going to come out of this very well. No, no doubt. So are we heading for a dark ages here, uh, Avi? Uh, you know, the dark ages lasted, well, they, they, they call them the middle ages, whatever they want to call them. They've lasted hundreds of years. That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what about uh, AI and its potential uh, participation in this mix here? Uh, you see anything with AI uh, perhaps lessening this uh, phase or maybe even reversing it? Well, there there are many there are many theories about what AI is going to do. Is it going to kill employment? I mean, there are many theories where it's going to do. The way I look at AI is I look at it similar to what happened in 2000. In 2000, the internet was going to revolutionize everything. Meanwhile, we then started into a nine year bear market mm -hmm. when the internet was supposed to revolutionize everything. So I look at AI in the same way. Everybody believes AI is going to revolutionize everything and it's going to push the markets to crazy heights. I look at it the same way as 2000. It's it's a reason everybody's looking for higher when the exact opposite potentially can happen. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, it's true, but eventually the, the, uh, Internet did revolutionize everything, right? Sure, but it doesn't mean that it's going to have an equal uh, equal effect on the stock market in the way everybody expected in 2000. Like I said, we went into a bear market when everybody thought we were heading to the sky because of the internet. Right. And I'm seeing the same thing with AI. Everybody believes AI is going to send us to the sky. And I'm looking at us on the verge of potentially starting a major bear market. All right. Well, 
Uh, anything else? Should we be buying food, guns, gold? <laughs> God, <laughs> Look, what do every, we do? Everybody can, everybody can prepare as they see fit. I, I would just... I would just be very, very careful about, you know, what assets you own, where you hold them. Um, and, and, you know, also remember, you know, it's best to have assets debt free. If you own your home debt free, there really isn't a lot more you need to, to, to subsist. So at the end of the day, being debt free, making sure your cash is in a safe place, you know, you should be okay through and also have a job that's, you know, have, have a skill that is that is easily needed and marketable. Um, I think that's really the best people can do to prepare. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for this uh, burst of optimism and enthusiasm. We appreciate it. But hey, you got to you got to tell it like it is. You got to call it the way you see it. Right. No, no question about it. I, I, I know, like I say, I, I pray that I'm wrong every single day. Every yeah. single day I wake up and I look at my charts and I pray that I'm wrong. But, you know, I, I, I have yet to see something that's going to tell me that I'm wrong. All right. Well, we're praying right there with you, Avi. Uh, Avi, tell us where we find you, how we connect with you on the Internet. Well, we've got ElliottWaveCreator.net. We have uh, 23 analysts that cover the world, as they say. Um, we provide all different types of analysis for markets and uh, indices and commodities, crypto all over the world. And we also have uh, a, a site called um, saferbankingresearch.com where we do a lot of the analysis about the banking industry. All right. Hey, we appreciate it, Avi. Appreciate you spending your time with us. And if you've got a question for Avi or myself, shoot me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. And uh, hey, you can find a link to Avi's site in the show notes of this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. We ask you to please sign up for your free newsletter where you get information like what Avi and I are talking about, which basically nobody out there is talking about. Avi, we will talk to you again soon. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me again. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.